Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I just want to talk about uh, same-sex marriage and um, the intellectual elite of the West and the hypocrisy of the intellectual elite and the fact that they don't tell you honestly what's going on. Uh, we've had uh, recently, the last few years, um, the states uh, in the West pushing uh, same-sex marriage and the argument goes something like this. Basically, we are liberal democracies. We don't take... Uh, we don't... Um, take sides people have a right to their sexual freedom and religious freedom and if people want to get married uh, in same-sex marriage then the state should recognize that uh, and should not take sides now this is the kind of liberal democracy argument uh, for same-sex marriage the problem with that argument is there is massive inconsistency and dishonesty about that argument Basically, the argument is not uh, has not really been about gay marriage, uh, same-sex marriage. If you look at the history of Western intellectuals from the 1960s to the present, uh, the feminist intellectuals and queer theorists uh, have always been against gay marriage, generally speaking. In the 60s and 70s, uh, feminist thinkers were saying that marriage is patriarchal, it uh, entraps women, queer theorists believe, in, believe that as well. And so they tried to dismantle marriage. So why is it they want same-sex marriage? The answer to that is that the gay rights movement want to normalise their behaviour. They believe that the only way to get that behaviour normalised is to subvert institutions that would be against it, and that institution is marriage. And so you can invert that institution by taking over it. And so bringing in gay marriage same-sex marriage means that marriage has to be redefined and as it's redefined it helps to normalize gay behavior uh, as seen in cult popular culture now this is scandalous because we've had for the from the 1960s even up to the present the vast majority of feminists and queer theorists who've said that gay mar uh, uh, that marriage is a bad thing and so now they've changed and some of them are promoting marriage. They're doing that because they want to normalise a particular sexual behaviour. It's not about marriage. Secondly, um, the actual effect on children uh, is going to be disastrous. And no, nobody's being honest about this. Nobody's saying anything about this at all uh, in the gay community. Uh, uh, and same-sex ad advocates and that is to say that as only uh, not even one percent of children will be affected positively by gay marriage in other words gay marriages uh, will if they do have children the vast majority of them will be from um, heterosexual relationships uh, only a, few, a small minority will be actually adopted so in other words the proportion of children that are going to be affected by positively by gay marriage is not even one percent however the vast majority of children that are going to be that that will be born uh, that that will be looked after will be in terms of uh, heterosexual couples that will be over 99 percent of children now the issue is this, is that there has been no attention uh, or encouragement from Western culture concerning the importance of marriage. And so therefore children have been affected in divorce rates, they've been uh, affected with child poverty because of this situation. In other words, the same-sex marriage issue is only going to confuse and make the issue difficult for the 99% of children that are in heterosexual couples. The reason being is the, the definition of marriage is going to change and that definition will not be as supportive or as strong for the heterosexual couples in their relationships. It is not going to be advocated uh, the responsibility uh, for father, the, the need for fathers, the need for uh, mothers to be in those relationships will not be advocated as vitally important uh, for marriage that definition will break up with the new definition of same-sex marriage so in other words 
to add into the major problems that are already there within Western culture concerning marriage and children, it's only going to compound it and it's going to affect 99% of the children. Now those who try to advocate gay marriage and children, the statistics are not reliable. Uh, if you're in a gay liberation movement and you're being studied by uh, a sociologist, you're going to say positive things about how you raise your children. So the statistics are not reliable at the present time. We need another 10, 20, maybe 30 years ahead before we can use statistics to back up the gay rights liberation and how they affect children. But what we do know is that uh, the decline in, in uh, the child poverty and uh, the issues about uh, the way children uh, are struggling uh, in, in the West is down to a lot of the breakup of, of marriage in Western culture. So that's another issue that the intellectual elites have not thought through, not worked out and uh, have bungled through uh, because they're trying to normalize a specific behavior. But then it even gets worse. If you look at contemporary dialogue and discussion in academic life concerning queer theorists and feminists, the vast majority of them don't actually believe in marriage. That's today in the actual dialogue and discussion of academic life in the universities, the feminist and queer theorists, they don't, most of them don't believe in gay marriage or any kind of marriage. Um, they see marriage as oppressive. So why as the popularist politicians and popularist gay rights activists, why have they pushed gay marriage if their intellectuals don't particularly think it's a good thing? The answer is because it's not about marriage, it's about normalization of a behavior, a sexual behavior. Then there's the other issue concerning consistency and application within the liberal democracy. Um, there are theories such as Elizabeth Brake who are advocating, and there's a number of intellectuals who are actually advocating the need for uh, being consistent in a liberal democracy. If we're not going to take sides, then we shouldn't take sides with polygamists bestialitist and all sorts of different uh, sexual behavior. Now there can be an argument and say well we don't agree with bestiality because animals don't have a choice um, but then again what about polygamy? What about uh, a son wanting to marry his mother or mother marry the daughter if the daughter is at a, a marriageable age of say 16, 17? In other words there is a lack of consistency within liberal democracy applying this doctrine of uh, we don't take sides. What this all tells you is the reason why they're advocating same-sex marriage is one reason only. They don't believe in marriage. It's basically about normalizing a behavior. This can also be proved by the statistics of the gay rights movement in terms of marriage. The vast majority of gay people will not be married or get married ever. Only a small percentage will actually use the right to get married. So again, this is not about freedom and about the rights of gay people to have marriage. This is about the intellectual elites of the West who would want to do social engineering and the importance of breaking down traditional marriage and normalizing sexual behaviors that they feel that they are happy with and that they don't want to go any further and choosing same-sex marriage as the vehicle to engineer that but they're not being logically consistent to their application uh, by presenting it to a further degree with um, polygamy. Uh, they are being inconsistent with their own intellectuals who the vast majority don't actually agree with marriage. They're being inconsistent with the statistics in that it, how it affects children and they are being inconsistent uh, on a number of other issues which I've mentioned. So in other words, there's more to this issue than the intellectual elites and the gay rights lobby are actually telling you. Alright, that's the point.